Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Aesthetic Impact's presentation. It's Marty Rosenblatt, your subconscious, subconscious mind, precognition exercise using remote viewing and one ARV protocol, part one. Marty is going to be uh, introducing us to some really interesting stuff today, and I will let him explain it. I think you're going to be amazed if you've never seen anything regarding precognition and the ARV1 protocols. Uh, Marty has been what we in our business term the guru of ARV for some time. If you have a question, you go to Marty. So we're very lucky to have him with us today to present his knowledge and share his time. And both of those, when you put it together, I think that you will leave today if you don't have any idea of the, of the information that he is about to present. You have a lot to think about and a lot to research. We're going to introduce you to what he has to say to us in this first session. Then we're going to break for a baseball game. We chose a baseball game because we knew it would be scheduled and it would have a before and an after, and he will explain that. And it happens all in one day, and for some of us, getting the time to come here even to do any of this is the biggest problem of all, So, or the biggest challenge. Um, Marty began his technical career in 1963 working for Shock Hydrodynamics, a computational physics company. In 1972, he and three others formed a California Research and Technology California, California, uh, formed California Research and Technology, which was acquired by Titan Corporation. Marty served as vice president of the Titan Research and Technology subsidiary, managing a group of 20 scientists who developed and applied sophisticated computer programs for analyzing high energy problems of interest the Department of Defense and NASA, and one of those was hypervelocity impact and nuclear weapons effects. Marty was founder and CEO and senior staff scientist with SciComp Corporation and its internet subsidiary called Emanate. SciComp and Emanate were acquired by an internet company in 1966, and Marty is now president, president of Physics Intuitions and Applications Corporation. He's the writer of the online magazine Connections Through Time, offers intuitive investigate, investing in applied intuition workshops, teaching associative remote viewing, ARV for predicting future event outcomes. Yeah, just to let everybody know, uh, that is a phonics exercise. And for those of us uh, who have had to have some physical therapy in that line, wow, Marty, I think uh, you didn't, I just did more than my physical therapist ever put me through. That, is a, that really explains your knowledge base very well. I like that intro. So with no further delay, I am going to turn this over to you, and we will get you up and running. So we're changing roles to you as presenter. You'll need to go, uh, does your video work? I know you just got your mic and everything, and if it does, down at the bottom, there is a little camera box. Um, I actually do. Oh, I see. Send video. If they want to look at <laughs> there, me. you are. Okay. Your new equipment is working perfectly. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, um, you also see the presentational yes, slide here. Yours, yours is up, and okay. up at the top, up at the top, there is a button because you didn't use this format before. Where you see you can advance your slides. Yep, I see it right there. Is that the All one? Right. Oh, no, that's a pointer. Up to the right, there's a zero one. Your subcon. I see it right there. there okay, go. very good. That's it. Okay, it's all yours. Okay, well, good. Good morning. Um, this is called a webinar. Um, Teresa, thank you for arranging all this, and I'm. So happy that you've uh, showed up because I really think what we're doing here is um, actually important, among other things, and certainly interesting. Um, but not only is this a webinar, this is a workshop. The intention here is for you to exercise your precognition, and um, you will be doing that. Uh, so the Oh, I wrong one. Here we go. We live in a physical world. Your brain is physical. 
However, more important than that, and this is our focus for the rest of the day, is the fact that consciousness is really more fundamental than the physical. That's our theme, and we are going to be applying that. Um, by the way, my style is to um, want you, if you're not clear on what I'm saying, to ask questions in time. So I'm assuming that you can do that. Um, so if uh, you have any questions, uh, please pipe in. I've left time for that. Now, here are our primary workshop goals. Learn about the capabilities of consciousness to gather information from what we call the future. The focus is on your consciousness. This becomes very personal. We're not talking about consciousness in a the theoretical sense. We're talking about your consciousness, your future, and your capabilities. And everything that we've set up here is really to get um, each of us, because I'm very active in doing this myself. I make predictions regularly. Um, over the years, as this has been developed, uh, the benefits of doing this, I feel, are quite substantial. So um, that's the intent here. So it's to learn about the capabilities of your consciousness to gather information from your future. 1ARV is the protocol we use. The one because there will be one target that you'll actually be um, uh, predicting, something that you'll see in the future. A stands for association and then remote viewing. And you will learn about all of that um, uh, during the course of the day. Now there's really one primary skill involved. And that is to entangle Entangle, connect, um, uh, lots of different words say the same thing, but you're working to gather information, entangle information between your past and your future. And you do this using the present moment, this here and now moment, which is the moment and the thing that you are most conscious of. And I want you really to get this because in terms of consciousness itself, the main thing which you know for sure is this very present moment. Um, science doesn't understand it. Uh, we can't explain it. And yet, from a personal basis, I challenge you to come up with anything that you know for more certain than your current personal, subjective, now experience, right? You hear that knocking? Whatever's going on, whatever you're looking at, your perspective is different than everybody else here, but your own personal, now conscious moment. That is like the atom of consciousness. That's the fundamental thing which consciousness is composed of. Yes, you have memories of things in the past, but you know what? You're also going to have now conscious moments in the future. You put a lot of these now conscious moments together, you get an event. You're here today. You're going to have an event um, making this prediction. There's going to be a baseball game event. Uh, but those are all composed of these now conscious moments. This is all about inner communication. The idea here is to build up inner communication skills between your conscious mind, these conscious now moments, and this subconscious mind, which I like to call the submerged consciousness. That's where these now moments seem to go. And that's where other people's now moments seem to go. And all of this really leads to um, meanings well beyond uh, money and short-term success. We're really talking about the essence here of, of um, consciousness and life and reality. I mean, consciousness is, is, is really the fundamental, and I'll have more to say about that. Um, and the idea here is to explore 
your personal consciousness. We're going to be doing group work, um, and there will be benefits from working in the group, but over the long haul, we want to, um, and I want to encourage each of you to work on your own personal consciousness. And we have to have fun today, too. If you're not enjoying the journey, you should find something else that you enjoy. Um, if you want to look back at life and say, you know what, this was a good trip. I enjoyed the journey. Now, science is beginning to um, investigate consciousness. Lots and lots of people are talking about it. Um, that's been true throughout time. What is this thing? I think, therefore I am. Um, you know, it's, it is a major topic of conversation and thought, and yet it is the number one mystery in one of the big science magazines' minds. Now, what I want us to do today is take the following point of view. We're getting into precognition, getting information from the future. But many of you have probably had precognitive dreams. What we're doing here is different. It's purposeful precognition. We are, of our own volition, on purpose, making a prediction and wanting to gather information from the future. And to do that, there's a mindset you need. And I want to explain that mindset. You really need to get the following kind of perspective concerning consciousness um, in your mind while you're doing this. And this is what I believe is not only the right perspective, I happen to believe it's the way the uh, universe works. So the reason consciousness is such a mystery is everybody tries to explain it in terms of other things. Well, the point of view I want you to take is that consciousness is the fundamental and that is why it can't be explained. Other things will be explained in terms of it. So you're taking the point of view now that consciousness is the most fundamental um, aspect of reality. It is the thing you know more certain than anything else. So that's the fundamental, consciousness. Take this circle to represent everything that consciousness touches. Um, thoughts your ideas, um, your emotions, um, the monitor you're looking at, but you know, you think of that as being physical, and but your consciousness is touching it in terms of what you see, what you're hearing, um, past, present, and future, and eternal. I mean, things like the color blue, the color red, those are sort of outside of space and time. It's ideas and things like that. Anything that is. All that is, is in this circle. Okay, so this circle is everything in the biggest sense that you can imagine that. Now, an interesting thing about this circle is it doesn't have a boundary because if there was anything, okay, like this is something, this is um, um, the monitor you're looking at, well, if that was totally separate from everything else, um, it would be outside here, but look, you've just thought about it. You're thinking about anything. So it can't be outside, it's inside. So this is a construct that has no boundaries. It's a very interesting construct. There aren't too many that you can think of like that. Um, so with this mindset, anything that you imagine has what I like to call a fuzzy boundary. There's other connections to it. It's connected to the physical world outside of it. It has its own history through time. How did it get made? There's all kinds of connections with anything that you can imagine. And ultimately, since there's only this one all that is, everything is connected to everything else. So that means one thing in time is connected to another thing in time. And the key is how we entangle those, how do we do those connections. Now guess what? You are a thing. You have a fuzzy boundary. And that fuzzy boundary 
is basically, um, well, wait, let me go one more. The fuzzy boundary is what I like to call your sub or sub, your subconscious. That's your fuzzy boundary. All of your conscious mouths are contained in what you might consider to be part of you. You have a whole life story here. That's your past, present, and future. Okay? In this eternal all that is circle, you're one of those things. Hey, and so are your friends. Um, but from the standpoint of the precognition we're going to be doing, so is your future. Do you get a sense of that? Everybody is very quiet. Um, but okay, I'm assuming you can get a sense of that. You have a sense of that. Everyone is, has verified that they can hear. We're good. Oh, okay. We're muted, We're muted so that we don't have feedback. Okay, very good. Thanks, Teresa, for telling that. Um, now, so with that kind of mindset, we can now talk about a protocol that takes advantage of this and allows us to purposefully do precognition. And so now we have a really nice mindset that talks about communication through time, knowing that you're going to have a conscious now moment in the future when you're going to know the outcome of a sporting event or some other kind of thing. You know, a sporting event is just an example of this. So in linear time, what we're getting ready to do here is we're going to do what is called a remote viewing session. Um, and that is simply a, a way of using your consciousness. We'll go deep into this consciousness well of all that is and gather information from a future now moment using a specific protocol. And we keep records. And remote viewing is a psychic kind of function, but it has a formal protocol and we keep records. That's kind of what distinguishes remote viewing um, from kind of other forms of psychic phenomena. But it is a, a you're using your, your psi capabilities. The one is because there's one target and the A is associations and we'll talk more about that. The second thing which is involved in linear time is we take the remote viewings that are done and then we do an, an, an analysis and a judging um, to make a judgment on what we think the actual prediction is going to be based on an association of the outcome of the game with a target. And I'll be telling you about those targets in detail. But now I'm giving you the overview of what we're going to do. So we start with remote viewing. We then do analysis judging. Um, and then we actually do feedback. Now, feedback is very important. I refer to this as the entangled truth. Because this comes after the game and we know the truth. You're now in the position to know the truth. Well, guess what? Our whole goal here is to communicate the truth back to when we do our remote viewing session. This um, entanglement, remember we started out saying the one skill is entangling? This is what you're entangling. So you're entangling something from the future with something at remote viewing time. This entangling feature is done totally with what is referred to as a right brain function. That physical brain really is separated into two parts. And the right brain, oh, and there are some connections, of course, but the right brain is the part of you, this free, open brain, that is able to make these connections. So it is these connections here that will um, be done with the subconscious in just a very relaxed, free, open fashion. And you're going to be doing it. The way you're going to be learning this is by doing it. And more than anything else, it's a kind of an allowing skill, this remote viewing skill. 
we'll be talking more about that. The an analysis judging, which is an important step, is primarily an intellectual skill. That's your left, that's your left brain skill. So that's what we do in linear time. And so when you're at this step, your intention, however, and intention is an important part of this, your intention is going to be to pick up information from your feedback. I want to give you one other perspective here, um, and uh, that's, uh, that's the following. The blue that you see here is this physical, spiritual universe that we've seen um, uh, uh, that we've been talking about. And there are lots of multiple, multiple things out here. You can ignore events. You can increase or decrease entanglement. Okay? You do that all the time. You forget that you're wearing a watch. Here's your remote viewing session. Here's your feedback entangled truth session. Your goal and what we're going to teach you is how to enhance that. And you make a real handshake among those two things. Okay. We're getting ready to exercise your precognitive abilities here. I want you to understand what we're going to be doing. So what is it that we're going to be predicting to um, move forward here? We're predicting the outcome of a baseball game, but we're not going to be predicting the winner. Um, I like to go after things which are like 50-50. So we're going to be predicting the over-under for a baseball game. What that means is at the end of the game, there will be a total number of runs for both teams. We're going to be doing the Tampa Bay Rays and the New York Yankees, which is starting in uh, like an hour and a half. The um, Rays will get a certain number of points. The New York Yankees will get a certain number of points. Let's say it's four to three. So the total number of points will be seven. So that will be the points of the game. Well, there are people... Um, all over the world that use their intellect and they look at the two pitchers who have been assigned to this game and the two teams and they'll say they think that it's a 50-50 chance that there might be um, seven and a half, there might be an eight point game or about a seven point game and so there'll be odds makers out there that will um, set what they think is the 50-50 point and we will actually use Las Vegas odds makers and there'll be a specific number of points that Catherine here works with me on this and she'll actually be setting up using their points um, uh, a public project which we have going which I'm going to tell you about and you're going to be part of. So the over under is just simply the total number of runs odds makers sets that and what we're trying to predict is whether or not the game will end up being over the points set by the odds makers or under the points set by the odds makers. So that's simply what we're, we're trying to do here. Now, the key to this in terms of the way the precognition works is that the winner, and the winning here means if we um, if, if the game actually goes over what the odds makers say, that would be the winning side. And we are going to break ourselves up into a over side and an underside. By doing this, this will become a lot clearer. The explanation just is always wordy, but um, trust me, once you do it, um, it becomes much simpler. But one side will actually see a photo. We call it a photo sight because a photo is like a two-dimensional thing. But your consciousness always, when you look at a photo, part of your consciousness goes there. And if there's sound, you hear it, you see all the visuals, you get a sense of what was going on when the photo was taken. 
So that's a photo site, and that's easy to describe. Now, this is where the association comes in, because the photo site is going to be associated with what we call the winning wager, even though we're not wagering. We're not paying any attention to the wagering. We're paying attention to the precognition and using the sports. Here is what we now are talking about in terms of when we talked about linear time. We were doing a remote viewing session. Your job here is going to be to describe your target. One side, over or under, is going to get a photo site. The other side, half of the people are going to have what's called an open target. And I want to describe to you an open target because that's a key part of what we're doing here. Um, the connection you're to make is with your own experience of your own future entangled truth feedback session. That's when you know the truth about the target. You will be looking at either a photo site or you're going to be doing an open target where basically you get a thank you and you get to decide what you want to do. So conceptually, since we are really embedded in this consciousness field where the future already exists, conceptually to understand this, I want you to think about this totally as starting with the feedback session. Because in the feedback session time, you're entangling the truth. The feedback is the truth. You know the truth. You will see either, notice there's an or here, you will see either, either a, fee, a photo site target, okay, or you'll get a thank you. If you get a thank you, that indicates you're, you get an open target and you are actually in luck. It turns out people start thinking, I want to see a photo site because then it's kind of clear what you're doing. You're going to describe it. Here, you get the opportunity to set up your own target. That's what an open target does. We front load you with a the truth. Since you're starting here, your target is known. Okay. Now, the open target can be anything. It's information from your sum. Um, the best way to get this is you dream. When you go to bed at night, you usually don't go to bed and say, I want to dream about so-and-so, but you have a dream. Where did that dream come from? The dream comes from your subconscious, and your conscious mind is listening, and you're learning to listen and respect what's coming from your subconscious. So your open target is... Your open target is a cooperative creation between you and your subconscious. You simply get quiet and you witness and report. And that's what the remote viewing is all about. Getting quiet, witnessing, and reporting. Okay. Um, in the past, the open target concept, and this is one of the things that is unique about the approach here, and it's an approach which has been put together, frankly, over the last 10, 11 years, is really designed for people who want to continue to explore their subconscious for the long term. One of the problems in ARV in the past has been that it gets to become a boredom feature. The open target gets around that completely because you're going to be getting information that your sub wants to give to you. How often do you actually get into a place, get quiet, and are open to getting information from your subconscious? 
Sometimes it might give you information about a photo site. Sometimes it might give you information of its choosing. And that's the mindset you want to pick up here. The primary difference between an open target and a photo site target is who chooses the target. Okay, An open target is chosen by the subconscious. A photo site target is chosen by a selection team. Um, and they choose what they think are interesting targets for you. But your subconscious gets to choose targets which may in fact be of more interest to you. And that's done, of course, in its own mysterious way. So your task is to choose um, your task, if you choose to accept it, that comes from kind of the um, uh, uh, Mission Impossible idea, and of course this is not Mission Impossible, is describe your photo site or open target. Entangle the truth, trust your sub. Your sub knows all this, so you just relax and mostly listen. And you're a witness and a reporter. The baseball game starts at 110. There are two sides. Um, the winning side sees the, pro sees the uh, photo side. Now, this is, some of you, um, all of you do have computers. There is a sheet which exists online where you can get this. This is a typical sheet. How many of you have done how many of you have done remote viewing already? I'm looking at the chat sheet now so I can the chat thing. Um, why don't you just put in a quick yes, okay? How many of you have not? And Jean has, has any of you never done remote viewing before, period? I want to get a sense of, okay, done CRV, terrific. Okay, okay, so at least two, I see two here have not. Okay, well, I'm going to set you, I'm going to set you up for this. Um, the idea is, and this sheet of paper is just really to, to kind of guide you, because uh, I don't think uh, we should take the time to have you print it out and, and, and get set up. But you should right now be getting, get yourself a sheet of paper and um, some uh, a pen, some comfortable writing material. Um, and we're now getting setting ourselves up to do this remote viewing session. This sheet is online, and I'll show you how you can get that uh, in the future. But all it is, it's very simple. Just write on it RV for remote viewing. Um, and you know what? I am going to do something else because I do want you to know how to get a coordinate. Are they are they able to see my screen or are they just seeing my uh, a presentation, Teresa? Like I've now put on my screen another page from the internet. No, they're only seeing your slides, your PowerPoint slides. Okay, so they can't see what I put on. Okay, very no. good. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm um, going to ask something, and I hope mm -hmm. you. Uh, there was a slide a second ago that said the Yankees versus the Cubs, not the Tampa Bay Rays. Is that uh, is that important? I hope not. Oh, this says Yankees versus. This is yeah. This has got Cubs. Right. And you're saying there was one before that had... And it, it said um, Chicago Cubs, too. And I thought, uh-oh. You know, I don't want to entangle us with the past or something. Versus oh. the Tampa Bay Rays okay. today. Yeah. You know, one of the things I have noticed, and I'm sorry for this, I uploaded to you the newest one. I set up here one of the older ones. Uh-huh. Um, 
So it's I a learning um, point for all of us. Thank you for um, thank you for pointing um, thank you for pointing that out. This one is um, on yours on your sheet of paper. Um, do put the Yankees versus the Rays. That is the game, correct? Um, that, okay. that we are going to do. So I I apologize for that. So on oh, your it, paper, do put the. It's not a big correct. deal unless we're learning something. You know, we want to. Learn. No, 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 no. I'm glad you pointed it out. I'm glad you pointed it out. Okay. Now for coordinates, what I've done, there is a way online. Um, and I will give you the link for this later. There is a public project um, where what we're doing here we can actually do online. And um, I will be giving you the link on how to do that. And what I have started with that is to um, uh, uh, Sides. God, I'm just. See, this was a little different than I thought, Teresa, and, I, and I'm sorry. I really thought I'd actually be able to um, do uh, something online and then let them watch me do it. Uh, um, so, your, would your desktop be better for that? Um. Yeah, the go to uh, webinar lets me lets them see it directly, and I can we, actually get coordinates for them. We can so what I to that do, if you want. If it's more important, we can switch you to your desktop. So that you could see my desktop? Yes, sir. Oh, you can do that. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah let's do that now. Switch, go switch up to my to, desktop. Okay, up at the top where it's got Quick Start, Info, Marty, PP, and Web Exercise. WebEx Exercise, yep. Yeah, you see that? Okay. Choose Quick Start, which I just did there. Okay. Now you share your desktop. Okay, I don't see that, I'm afraid. Okay, go back up to share then, where you've got file, edit, share. Share, yeah, share. Uh-huh. Do you have the ability to, um, does it say, choose to switch to your desktop? Presentation or document. Oh, I, I see what happens here. Okay, presentation. Application, desktop, yeah, desktop, monitor one or monitor two. Okay. There you go. We are seeing your desktop in five, four, okay. there we go. Very good. Okay, so I would like actually to do this in real time so you'll get an understanding of this. Um, um, and because all of you can do this. There, there is a website. The way you get to it is by going p-a-i.com, p8.html. OK. And you put in right here, 1-A-R-V. That's the username. You can be writing this down. This is the password, though I have all this information online. One ARV, and you log into the system. Now, we are about to get a real live um, coordinate. Here is the coordinate. Just so we can split the group up into two sides, I'd like those of you Let's use your um, um, main telephone number, okay? If your main telephone number ends off with an uh, a, an odd number, let's have you use this coordinate, and those of you with even numbers are going to use the second coordinate. So I'm showing you how random this is. I'm going to call this... Um, um, I need an email address to send this to, so I'm going to say odd tell numbers at p i a dot com. So this is the way you would go ahead and get your coordinate. 
Okay, so those of you who have odd coordinates, put this as a number on top of your blank sheet of paper. Okay. And here and here. And that's it. Next, we're going to be doing some judging with that. Okay, so the odd ones did that. Now, um, wait a second. Where did I put that? Now we're going to get the coordinate for those of you who have an even. So there's your coordinate there. I'm writing this down. Two, three, nine, eight is the even coordinate. Coordinate to nine, three, nine, eight is the even. Okay, um, and let's make this even coordinate. Normally, if you did this, of course, you would do it at your own. Um, you'd put in your own email, and this is how you would get feedback. Okay. So, this is all something which you'll be able to do online. And now, I'd like to take the presentation back. How do I get this back, Teresa? Uh, hang on just a second. Um, this is you just need to go up along the top where now it says, should say, um, because I know I have to go between my screen and your desktop. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing... If you click down at the bottom, I had a screen that said... Um, ah, you are sharing... I see something saying you are sharing this monitor. Uh-huh. Share application. Can you see up along the top where it says webinar exercise? Do you have that ability anymore? No, I don't have that. I have something at the bottom. Right. At the bottom, I had a blue-green colored panel, and it has a big arrow on it. If you put the big arrow, it brings you back to, because I'm looking at your slide screen again. Yes, I'm trying to get out of that. and You want to get back to... You know, you know what I, I you know, if they're seeing my screen, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on, hold on. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. All right. I, I can show it. Let me just show the rest of the presentation here. And I apologize that this wasn't as smooth um, it's okay. as, as it could have been. But I know what I'll do. I'll it's just bring the presentation. Okay. I'll bring the presentation over here. Okay. I can do it this way. Yeah, uh, You're now seeing my screen, right? Yeah, one of the participants says, on the bottom right of my screen was a flip icon, and I got right back to the WebEx screen. And that's exactly what I did. So we're looking at your slides. We're looking at my slides now. Okay, that's fine. And that's just what I want. Um, okay, so we are doing the, it's a different game. So on your sheet of paper, now this is going to be your task. Describe your photo site or open target. What I'm now about to do is we just did this. So we got in, we did the username. We, want, we now want to do what's called the cool down. And then I'm going to give you, so you all have on the top of your sheet of paper your appropriate coordinate, correct? Um, um, Teresa, I can no longer see their chat screen, so I'm counting on you to okay. make sure that um, this is going as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. um, on that sheet, you should simply have your coordinate, the name of the game, and um, you can put your name on the right, and then draw a line. Everything above there has been using your left brain. We're now getting ready to start to get into using your subconscious. We're now beginning to do 
what's called cool down, which is a very important part of the whole remote viewing process. You're now beginning to start to listen to your subconscious. So relax a little bit in your chair, and I'm going to take you through um, a cool down for the newbies. Some of you that have done this before, you've got your coordinate. You can you can start um, your session on your own if you wish. You've got about seven minutes. Uh, Marty, just so, checking. Are you using your slides at all? Just I'm going to be using the slide. We're just so we're so so we're synchronized. We are looking, or I am looking at slide 19. Um, on my screen is something that says one login at username at wp-i-a.com, P8. It fills up my whole screen. You're not seeing that? No. Um. Uh, see, I took that from... Um, is it in your slide preview? What, what are you looking at? You're looking at something that says... One ARV transcript. Says one ARV transcript. What are you looking at now? The same thing. Oh. You're looking at one ARV transcript. Yeah. It's slide nineteen on your webinar exercise. Um I don't know. Oh, yeah. Marty Jean is still, or some people are still. Share desktop, share document, share application. All right. So. If I do a share application, will they be able to see my PowerPoint? I don't know. I, I okay. I'm. We got out of sync here somehow, Teresa. Yeah. Um, that's My okay. thing said, oh, wait, maybe I have share document and share application clicked. Um, Marty PP intro, what does that do? Oh, that's the intro, that's so I don't want that. Webinar share document. You, are, you just need to probably go back up to the top and make sure that we are sharing your desktop. Okay. Okay, let me see if this will work. There we go. That's my desktop? Okay. Probably. So you're now seeing my first slide? I'm seeing Possibly. Um, I'm seeing the world of consciousness is not flat and a brain on the right. Right. Okay, so that's good. Now, how can I move it, though? Okay, all you need to do is catch us up to wherever your current spot is. Yeah, but I'm, I don't have control. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a little arrow here. Is that... mm -hmm. I did share document. I'm sharing it. Mm -hmm. But yet I don't have control. Uh, now I have control. You're now seeing me go through these? Yes. Okay. Okay. We're now doing a review, folks. Okay. So now we're at the cool down, right? Okay, shake out a little bit, set aside all of this little confusion. In fact, this is what the cool down is all about, is to get away from the day-to-day -day stuff that's been going on. Take a few deep breaths. Okay, now for your newbies, the whole key here is to get into a place where you're going to be receiving information. What I'm going to do is just quiet you down. We're going to take a few deep breaths. I'm going to say some words. 
The last thing I'm going to say is describe your photo site or open target, and then whatever comes to you, you'll get images, you might get sounds, you might get shapes, you might get words. Um, uh, whatever comes up, put it down on the sheet of paper. And don't question it, don't um, just put it down. And then you might get quiet again and do it two or three times. And um, what I'd like to have is one sheet of paper with stuff on it. Okay? And um, so so that's 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 what we're about to do now. Okay, so let's take a few deep breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Drop everything else that's been going on. Get quiet. Breathe in. Breathe out. Get a sense of your physical body being very quiet. You're now beginning to connect up with your subconscious. You're going down into this consciousness reality where all information exists. You're beginning to connect up with your feedback session where the truth is entangled. Be quiet. Okay. Describe your photo site or open target.
Okay, why don't you begin wrapping it up? And at the end of your paper, write um, end or end of session, because that's now the remote viewing sessions. Okay. You're all done? Okay, take care, Steve. I'm sorry you're not seeing the judging. Um, one thing which I want you and all the people to know is I'm very accessible via email, so you can feel free to email me at any time. Okay, is everybody done with their remote viewing session? Okay. Teresa, are you with me? I'm assuming yeah, that's a yeah. yes. I'm okay, here. good. My talking has probably disturbed you enough that uh, <laughs> you are done. Okay, now remember the next step. So now uh, stretch a little bit. You want to get out of what was the subconscious mindset and into the um, intellectual, more intellectual mindset because we're about to do the uh, uh, analysis judging phase. And one of the best ways to learn about analysis judging is to understand what it is not. Now, what it is not is something like the following. We have our skeptic here. Here is our remote viewer. The skeptic says, I alone know the contents of this envelope. And our remote viewer says, it's a charcoal drawing of a woodchuck eating a small orange. Well, nice try, a little fraud, but that's a long way from an ink drawing of a beaver eating a tangerine. So the beaver, the, the <laughs> connection with the woodchuck, Hopefully you get the point there, that we don't expect our subconscious in a session like this to be exactly right. We just want to be about right. You've got to give a little space to your, um, to your subconscious. Uh, and you expect that it often will give you information in metaphors. It gives information in, in many, many different ways. Okay, now here, just because of the format we're in, um, uh, you know, Teresa, you're you're no longer you, you're not. Are you seeing my screen now? Or are you still seeing the uh, presentational stuff? I'm seeing the slides, the cartoon slides. Okay, I want them now to go. In fact, we 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 need to now switch. Maybe I am going to have to learn how to do this better if we do this again. Okay, how do I get to... You mean to go back to your desktop? At top, at the top here? Uh-huh. Do you see quick start up at the top? Quick like a little start. Tab along. I yeah, have a little tab. Yep. Yeah. I see there quick stop. Now share your desktop. Share your desktop. Can you on that? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. You're in business again. Okay. So now we're now going to do, you remember how we're at this website, very easy website. We've got a remote viewing session here. Usually, um, you might very well want to have somebody else do a coordinate for you, or you'd want to do one um, on your own. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you might want to do judging yourself 
or have somebody else do judging for you. That turns out to be um, uh, kind of an optional part of the protocol, and many people in the field believe one is better than the other. What we're going to be doing here, remember this is to learn the approach, what we're going to be doing here is showing you how to do it, and we're going to be doing self-judging since I don't have access to your transcript. But if somebody else um, had access to your transcript, you could have them put in the coordinate. So this is the coordinate for those of you that did the odd, that had odd telephone numbers. And for the first time, nobody in the universe, this is a randomly chosen, what we call an indicator photo site. So all you do is put in the coordinate here. Up will now come the email address. This would be your email address. And this is the one possible. Notice it's only a possible because this group was on one side, turned out to be the underside. Um, that's what this WD2 tells me. And we're about now all to look at this one possible target choice. And the point here is that your transcript, remember, you were connecting up with feedback. So you will see this at feedback time and know it's the truth. The question is, did any of your odd now only transcripts, because there's only one target, did you, in fact, get anything which looked like this? And um, can you turn on their mic so they can talk, so I can hear what they're saying, Teresa? Uh, yeah, just a second. Um, so how many of you had odd? Now, wait, Maria, I have to unmute everybody. That's just okay. taking me just a minute. I have, okay. to, I have to pass mics and unmute everybody. Okay. Just trying to get everybody here. So look at your transcript, look at this, and being a, a judge, I'd like to know how well you think you did here. So rapidly passing mics came in and may have passed them all out because we don't we only have seven. Okay. So and if anyone wants to talk, they can. Okay. How many of you had odd? Did any of you do the this coordinate, the eight oh four two six four coordinate? Hello, Marty. Yeah. I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, I had the odd coordinates. Okay, so how did this look to you, Tom? Well, uh, my image was of a white bread sandwich, the stacked layers of it mostly, so that might be sort of a match to that boat there, but not much, so I wouldn't rate it very highly. Okay, so what do you think? Yeah, you know about the ranking system, which is the next thing I want to talk about. Um, so one, what would you rank it? This is the ranking system that we use, a two. Okay. So your prediction would be in the other direction. So you would have gone over. Anybody else? Um, I had some overlay, I would say, of a I, – I'm looking at the horse and carriage type stuff as being a vehicle. I didn't get yes. that, but I got a vehicle and a person. Okay, that's pretty good. Was the vehicle, did you get any water or stuff like this? Uh, uh, no. I got snow, so that's frozen water, but that's a jump. Yeah, okay. So I don't know quite how I would judge that. But look, we're just trying to understand um, the methodology here. And if you look here, three 
is a pass um, to where you get some correct elements, but not sufficient to suggest results beyond chance. This is what's called Russell Tarr. He was one of the guys that started remote viewing back in the early 1970s. Um, this is his judging system, which you have access to from this from the uh, online uh, approach here. Um, I would almost give you a pass based on what you said, Teresa. It sounds like you have some, but not really good correspondence with several matchable elements. Conceptually, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But in a time frame, um, more yours would be more historical compared to mine. But anyway. Yeah. I would have given that a four myself. Those two? Okay. And judging is a bit of a uh, an art. In other words, what you saw, you would give that a four. Um, and that's important for all of you here to understand. Two different judges are sometimes different now because it's, you know, if you get a seven, a six, or a five, this is good correspondence with unambiguous, unique, matchable elements, but some incorrect information, then it's clear the judge's job is very easy. Often when you're down in this range, we see differences like that. Um, Tom has been around a long time, and with vehicle, you like the snow too, huh, Tom? Um, no, mostly the vehicle and the person. Okay. 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 Very good. Well, you know what, Tom? I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you. So that's one for under. Anybody else? Okay. I mean, I know if you're just learning and this is still on. Wait, go ahead. This is the this is the over and the under again. This is the under target. Okay, so a four That's would indicate under. Correct. Well, I thought you said over. The first one was over. This one is under. I'm I'm I have a score here which says I have one under, and one over. Yours was oh, over. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, in this case, then, between the two, I would say we have a pass for this, since I have one under and one over. So I'm going to put a confidence ranking in three, which would make this a pass. So this is a pass. And I'm going to submit it. And now, for the first time, we're actually submitting a prediction. Okay. So now let's AJ, the other one. This goes for those of you that had um, the even numbers. That was four, two, nine, three, nine, eight. As I said, this is a real workshop. I mean, we're really doing it here, folks. This is going into the system. Now they have a different indicator target, um, and again, we don't know who's going to be open. We don't know what the outcome is really going to be. Those of you who had the even numbers, did you get round things? Did you draw a circle? Did you get, in this case, it also looks like there's certainly wet. Um, did you get multiples, uh, brown, uh, hands, person? Um, again, you're not necessarily going to get these words, but you're going to get sketches maybe um, of these kind of shapes. Okay, anybody here who did the even? Um, I hate to say this, but I should have been doing the even, but I was being host and I sort of messed up on that. So I did the odd. That's, oh, God. But that was, no, that's okay, but that was the coordinate you did. Uh huh, yeah. Okay, you know, so that's fine. From where I was in a vantage point of viewing yeah. and my vehicle and my biological, it sort of matched. But oh, you mean it matches, you're saying it matches this one too, huh? Well, no, the other one. Sorry. Okay, yeah. okay. No, that's good. That's good. Okay, but at this point in time, those of you that did 429398, is there anybody here that did that? Okay, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Well, then I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, um, we'll just ignore this then. 
we just ignore this. So if nobody did it, um, didn't feel comfortable enough to do it, we won't submit it. And well, that's multitasking and missing. <laughs> well, I, yeah. So. Well, um, there's people talking on chat about this. I think you better read the chat. Well, why don't you? I, I can't get that. What are they saying about it? And I have to pull it back up because I'm looking at your desktop. Right. I don't think this is a good match. I got colorful red and blue. Oh. Question mark. Oh, okay. So someone did do it. Um, yeah. Okay, so that sounds like they got a two. Thank you. Maybe their mic isn't working or something like that. Thank you, Tom. So at least one person got a two. For odd, this is, this is an odd one. It's not the um, one, Yeah, and Maureen, your mic is activated, oh, okay. but you're in here twice. I was afraid to, um, like, you came and went. So let me see if I can do something about that. Anyway. Okay, but we, we do need to um, move on. This this is still the odd no wait, the person who said they had poor stuff was odd, not even. Tom, is that what you Okay, so is there is there anybody here for the four two nine three nine eight? Notice I can go back, I can put that in, and I'll go right back to where I was. And that's the even, I mean, that's the over. So there's nobody here for that. Okay. Um, when we do this randomly like this, that, that sometimes happens. Um, okay, so we simply, we simply won't, we won't submit. And now this is the last thing I wanted to show you on here. So we've done this. We've done this. Now here's how you find out what your predictions are. Um, uh, somebody. Marty, um, I don't want to mess you up or type. But somebody, if you're not going to submit, Nancy Jean got colorful red and moving. And that looked to me like cranberries floating in a bucket. Oh, so she did say. Okay. I think she nailed it. No, she did odd, not even. Okay, well I gotta shut up then, but sorry. Okay, but she was doing the she was doing the odd. So that's down here. Um she was doing well wait, by odd that was under. Right, let me make sure I get this right. Odd was the under. That is correct. Um, I think we'll leave it as a pass, though, because that still is two to one. But now, um, you can remember that. This has nothing to do. The, the way we put it in is we put it in as a pass. So here's the odd telephone number. So what we have here are all the people. Now, remember, this is a public project, so other people have been putting in their predictions. So here we have some threes. There was a two. Here's a one. Here's a four. We always put the summary at the bottom. So in this case, we had um, um, one person who had a confidence ranking of four or more. They went over. We had two people who were balanced. And we had passes. So we have three people. Um, Two are over, two predictions are over, one are for under. So in the public way, we have a rule that says if all we have are three predictions and they're not all in the same direction, this will actually be a pass. So, uh, Catherine, are you still, you're still with me here? Uh, there were not enough mics. Let me see. I can well, give her one now. Hang on, just a minute. That's I can okay. give her a mic. Matt, as long as she's listening, she knows she knows what to do. She's okay. she's the uh, really she's the one who runs the public project, um, and she is now going to say publicly she'll put on the lists that this is a pass for today. Um, 
and and so that that'll be the prediction. But notice that is the group prediction. People have their individual predictions. Tom made a prediction, um, and it may or may in it, you know. So when we get feedback, the feedback will be very personal. Okay, so um, obviously we need to do our predictions as we did here before the game um, occurs and we achieve that. There's a half an hour left to go and we do like to put the public out usually an hour to a half an hour but usually we do it about an hour before um, uh, just to make it a clear precognitive prediction. So now you're seeing my screen correct? Yeah. I want to try to see if I can get you to see my screen here. Um, I have two screens so I'm looking at my other screen here and then I'm going to just bring it over and be ready to ask answer questions and maybe uh, um, talk a little bit more about some of this stuff. Yeah, let me show. Okay, so you're, see, you're seeing this now, correct? You're seeing this RV session on thank you or open sign? Yeah. Okay. Um, very good. Now, what if I make it full screen? Let me just see if you still see this. Are you yeah. seeing that? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we tried that before and that didn't work. Oh, very good. Now it is working and I have I have control. Um, people have mics open, so I do want you to talk to me. Um, about what we did and questions um, and that sort of thing. Here are examples of what other people have done during real workshops where, you know, where, where down um, and able to talk to them and, and um, uh, see things at the same time. This is an example of actually that Russell Targ did. He was at a workshop in Las Vegas. And this was, of course, blind, so he didn't um, he didn't know this. And he did. Uh, oh wait, I wanted to show you Russell's first. He did this session, and you can see it's you know you don't say things like car, but he got transportation very much like you did, Teresa. Um, and he's got a shape here. You get a shape like that. That's the kind of information remote viewing will give you. Um, again, for the newbies, the guys who've been around understand this. Here's another example. That one was a four. Um, here's another example, which um, a different a different Teresa did. And here you can see this was like a five, maybe even higher, maybe even a six. Got the airplane, got the people. This line, you know, she thought it was a kite. Um, when you think your intellect is getting involved, this is a good idea to put over here analytical overlay. You're trying to understand when the information is coming from your subconscious. It's the subconscious. The submerged information knows the truth, and it's the subconscious that has the information. The intellect tries to guess. Now, in this case, it did a good guess. It also said, That's a six, Barney. yeah, this is a six. Mm -hmm. The kite even, she, the intellect took this string, thought maybe this was a kite, and it probably turned out to be this line. You can see when you see stuff like this that this ability for the subconscious 
to communicate with the conscious mind. And remember, that's what this is all about. The reason to do this is to build up this capability of being able to get information from your subconscious, which has access to everything. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that marvelous? Now, the way we set this up, you also might get just a thank you. In that case, your subconscious gives you whatever it wants to. You're beginning to learn to just listen to your own subconscious. You guys are partners. Your conscious mind, your intellect, your ego, all of that. The way, you know, we do live in a physical world. But being able and wanting to listen to your subconscious at times which are, from the standpoint of the intellect, kind of random because you won't know when this happens as you do this regularly. But listening, you'll get information. This happens to be an example from a thank you or an open session where the person got this, didn't understand it at the time. Remember, you do the same thing when you go down. You're just listening. You're acting as a witness to what your subconscious gives you. Didn't know whether he would get feedback as a photo side or a thank you. Drew this. When he found out it was a thank you, and um, you then do your feedback session, he said, Ah, oh, I know what this is. I am a procrastinator. I have been procrastinating for six months on fixing up my house. And that's what this was. <laughs> he knew that his subconscious was reminding him to get off his butt and fix up his house. So that's a true story. <laughs> and uh, that was just one example of how the subconscious will communicate to you when you're open to having that happen. So you can do this again in a purposeful fashion, not just during dreams where your subconscious you know, is used to communicating with you. You can do this during a quiet remote viewing session. And I at least think that's really cool. Um, okay, that actually finishes. The next step is after the game. We will get into the um, feedback. We obviously don't know now what feedback is, and I'll show you how we do that online. Um, uh, so if there are any questions, I'll entertain them now. The other thing I can do now is show you where a lot of these details are. I'm not seeing the chat, so if somebody is chatting with me, you know, um, Teresa or Tom, let me know. Well, I did some mic passing, and um, some people have had to go. Mm -hmm. So hang on. Um, there is one person here who uh, said, did get even, got the round circles, sparkles, and sending it to us privately. And... It was all about the environment in here and being able to communicate. Um, have more than three, di three predictions. Hang on, let me see. I'm going to. Uh, Paco, you should have a mic. And you, if you want to um, address any of this. Somebody got a match to the viewers, it sounds like. Uh, is, who's speaking, please? Yeah. That yeah, that was Tom, but he he wasn't the one who did what you described. Do right. you know That's the coordinates? That's person who's emailing um, privately and not out into the general room. Oh, I see. Okay. Can you tell us whether or not what their coordinate was? Ask them what their coordinate was. Were they the even coordinate or the odd coordinate? Oh, he should have a mic. He um, said it was even a he did. Okay, so that was four two nine three nine eight, and that did sound like a good match. And um, yeah, he says it's even. 
Okay, so that was for the over. So that person then predicted over. It sounds like they had a CR of at least four, four or five. Um, okay, so you should know that, and then we'll see what the outcome is. And if it's over, then um, you will see your photo site. Uh, all, there we go. Paco to all participants, even. Okay. Okay, then, Paco, your prediction, then, is for over. And um, Catherine... In fact, um, maybe I can I can do this too. She will be publishing on the email lists. I already sent it out. Okay, very good. And what was the what was the score? What was the odds makers score? Um, seven and a half. Let me check again. Okay. Yes, yeah, seven so, and a half. Okay, so from this site, and you can take this URL down. It's one arv dot com slash public with a capital P dot html. Um, this has all the information and all the links. Shows you how to log on and to do just what we did. Um, this presentation is basically here. So if you wanted to see this. You could you can actually go here and get this presentation uh, without the words. I guess uh, uh, Teresa will be publishing them, but we do publish our history. And that's here. Um, and the public project is at fifty eight percent. Where we're doing something which is a 50 50 proposition. And down at the bottom here is where Teresa now put in the actual. Um, we have a pass, but it's uh, at 7.5. And, um, and that's where we are. So this is something which I'm hoping to get more and more people involved in. You can see how many people are playing now. We typically have, um, I don't know, you know, we've, I think 14 or so, maybe about the max. Sometimes we get as low as three or four. Um, but the idea is, frankly, I think what we're touching here is at the level of a paradigm shift a major societal paradigm shift to this to the extent that more and more people can build this skill um, this can in fact improve society in a major way this can be as important as a Copernicus revolution imagine being able to get into your sub and not all the time um, but um, reasonably often, build up this communication channel where your subconscious is purposefully giving you information about subjects of interest to you. This changes the world. This also makes the world a lot closer to all being one. This connectivity becomes much more apparent. Um, so I'm very hopeful of that. I just see just so you can see, this is what um, Catherine just sent out. And it has, so it's the public project, public precognition project. We had put out an announcement about this game. Um, and uh, she then puts out the specific prediction. In this case, it's a pass. Uh, but the points are here, and this then allows, after, and after the game, um, Catherine will go in, and all of those, you notice how we had the emails um, here. The reason we put in the emails is when everything is over, Catherine will put in what actually happened, whether it's over 
or under, and here are the predictions that each person each person did, so they can tell whether they were over or, or, or under is outcome A. Um, and here, see, they got outcome B, so they went the other way. So this was actually a prediction for over. Um, uh, anyway, she will be sending them. She will be sending them their feedback. So in their email, they will get either a photo site or they'll get something which will say thank you, and then they'll do their feedback and tangle truth session, which we'll all do, those of you um, hopefully will come back um, because it is really the key to this. This is the where you get the information that you connected with during your remote viewing session. And so in a couple of hours we'll meet again and um, we will talk about that. Marty, question. Hello? Yep, I'm here. Okay, uh, so Paco's prediction has been included in there. His was for under, right? His was probably not. Well, oh, yeah, unless he was the second one of the two out of three. If he was the third out of two out of three, then no, we would have actually. I don't think his was included in this at all, was it? I don't think so. I, I, you know, just the way it worked out, he didn't communicate it soon enough. Well, if it had been included, it would be three out of four for under. Is that correct? Um, no, because here, look here. You see on the screen? Over, so yeah, it, it would have been a pass anyway. Okay. So the group, the fact that we ended off with the group pass looks like it was going to happen anyway. But nevertheless, in terms of, you know, Paco... It's interesting. There's a different way of rooting for the game, but very often some people like root. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you would be rooting now for a, uh, um, a high-scoring, uh, no, for a low-scoring game. You'd like one of the pitchers to have a no-hitter. <laughs> Pretty hard to keep all this straight. The, um, well, it, for the group level, sometimes it is. Once you start doing it yourself. Um, you know, your own personal one, which is what you, of course, pay your attention to. Um, there's no problem. In fact, Tom gets involved in doing not this approach, but another approach that's similar where he predicts um, horse races, and he likes to do one out of ten horses, and you don't seem to have much of a problem, Tom. <laughs> uh, you may... I don't know if, if it's uh, relevant or not, but uh, it occurred to me that the, what I got that you did score some points for. Yeah. Um, there is a, a horse there that is my biological, but the biological I got was a person. Right. The very first thing that I ever, when I met this person, burst from my subconscious. I looked at this person and said, my, you're very brown. Really? That person, that person grew up in Hawaii, and I have much love for this person. He's a very good friend. A very good friend. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I don't know, whatever that means. And that that's what came into uh, your mind. Interesting. Yes. And which, and which side were you on? Were you on under? I, I can't remember. What was your I coordinate? Was the, yeah. the first one with the vehicle. Yes, which was under. Yeah, that was a, that was a strong session. Okay, all of our conversation here is indicating um, uh, under anyway. So um, we'll see us, but other people went different ways, and this is what we're doing now. We're putting it out there. We're putting out group predictions because we are trying to learn. I do believe eventually we will get to a point where the group approach, which may be somewhat different than it is now, um, has a potential which uh, may be greater than any of the individual um, uh, uh, predictions over the long haul. Because, you know, it may be that someday some people are on and someday some people are, are off, you know, one individual. Um, we haven't found anybody yet that's like, you know, 90% accurate. Um, 
But if we could combine a bunch of people who are, say, 60% accurate, maybe as a team we can get 70, 80% accurate. That's the goal, and that's the direction we're trying to take all of this work. Um, in addition to getting people, in fact, the primary purpose is to get people to really spend time with their own subconsciousness and build up that partnership and use it in their lives in productive ways. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, then why don't we um, end it here and we'll come back at, um, let me get this right, it is now almost, um, what is it, it's 10, so it's almost 1 o'clock East Coast time. And so we'll be coming back at 4 o'clock East Coast time, uh, 1 o'clock West Coast time. Thank you, Marty. Okay. I'm sorry, Kat, somebody needed to say something? No, I was just saying okay for 4 o'clock. Okay, well, thanks everyone, and I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties, but, you know, until we practice this a few times, we're going to see that, and until we get a group together to practice in these environments, we just can't iron out the glitches. So maybe we'll do this again in the future as well as beyond this afternoon, and we will uh, be able to do it without quite as much questions in the middle. So, right. okay, we'll go ahead and end the session for now and, and here on WebEx and be back at 4 o'clock Eastern. Thank you, Marty. Thank, Thank you. Thank everyone. Bye. Okay. We'll see you soon. Good. Bye now. Bye. Just making sure that I stop, there we go, stop recording, yeah. we don't want to lose this.